Hello everybody and welcome to OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. I'm Jack and today I've got another deck analysis for you guys. Uh, this one was pointed out in our regionals video that we put up yesterday as of when I'm recording this. It's going to be Speed Giratina. So I'm going to jump straight into it with the Pokemon. As you can see, we're starting off with three Giratina EX, the new Giratina from Ancient Origins. Um, this guy has been seen in a lot of decks lately, both in Standard and Expanded. Mainly um, Expanded in all honesty, because there hasn't been too many... Standard tournaments, obviously a really great Pokemon, 170 HP, Renegade Pulse, uh, preventing all damage and effective attacks from Mega Pokemon, uh, with things like Mega Manetric and Mega Rayquaza running around at the moment, really really strong ability. And then Chaos Wheel, kind of an awkward um, attack cost, Grass, Psychic and 2 Colorless, Chaos Wheel doing 100 damage, um, but locking your opponent out of playing Tools, Special Energy and Stadium cards uh, next turn. So yeah, really, really strong Pokemon. We're pairing him with uh, a couple of different Dragon-type support cards just to be able to get Giratinas out as quickly as possible. Um, the main guy, well, the main thing we're going to be using to get Giratinas set up quickly is Reshiram with the Turbo Blaze ability, letting us attach a Fire Energy from our hand to one of our to one of our Dragon Pokemon. Sorry, um, while Reshiram is in the active once per turn. Obviously, a really good ability. Um, and you can use it more than once uh, if you have multiple Reshiram out, Reshiram out, so you can use it on one Reshiram and then switch to a bench Reshiram and use Turbo Blaze again um, and paired with Double Dragon Energy. That means we can indeed get a Chaos Wheel set up theoretically turn one. Um, and yeah, that's the that's pretty much the aim of the deck. So we've got four of the Reshiram. The other uh, important point to note about it is it's really good at really efficient at getting rid of um, things like Regice which can stop the deck in its tracks really Brightwing is accessible to us because we have double dragons so this lightning cost isn't really an issue for us um, Brightwing, Brightwing with a muscle band obviously knocking out a Regice in one hit uh, so yeah that's this is sort of our Regice killer uh, but we do indeed have two Hydreigon EX which also has the Shred attack which I'll talk about in just a second um, we're running Hydreigon pretty much just for its Dragon Road ability. As long as there's a stadium in play, each dragon, po each of your Dragon Pokemon um, has a 2 less retreat cost. And obviously this is stackable, so if you've got 2 Hydreigon out and a stadium, your Dragon Pokemon have a, four, um, have a retreat cost of 4 less, which nothing in here has a retreat cost of 4 or more. Um, I think the highest retreat cost here is 3. So obviously a really, really good sort of combo if you can get uh, both Hydreigons out at once. And then again, Shred is indeed accessible to us just because we have Double Dragon uh, doing a bit less damage and not able to one-shot Regices in one hit, unfortunately. But it is an alternative attacker and does get through Regices' um, f second attack, which can cause the deck problems if you didn't have these two ways of being able to deal with it. Uh, next up, we have a single Bunnelby. Bunnelby is obviously really, really important, f uh, pretty much just for its the Rototiller attack later on in the game. If you're going really, really aggro, uh, you want to make sure you've got Bunnelby just to be able to get your Double Dragons back um, and other resources. The main resource we're going to be getting back is Double Dragons, but obviously there are two or three um, single copy cards that we have in here that can be used multiple times to ensure a victory against certain different decks. So Bunnelby is basically in here for that. Um, a late game sort of card that's going to prevent you from um, sort of fizzling out with the strategy and will enable you to get back some of these really important cards um, later on in the game. Then we have three Shaman. Obviously Shaman is the best, pretty much the best draw support we've got at the moment. Uh, so strong with the setup ability and because this deck is designed for speed we can drop our hand size down relatively low a lot of the time. So we are going to be getting quite a few cards from setup. Um, and again, because we have basic energy, we do technically have access to Sky Return as well. Um, not really a big deal, but we do we can use it if we need to. And then finally, we have two Hooper EX again, just for this Scoundrel Ring ability. Abilities are so huge at the moment. Scoundrel Ring, uh, letting us search for three Pokemon EX except Hooper EX, um, and putting them into our hand when we bench him, um, which can be really good for just getting different pieces out of the deck. It means your Ultra Balls then search for technically four Pokemon, which is really good. 
you can search out your Giratinas, all your Hydreigons, and even a Shaman, j just to sort of carry on refreshing the hand. Um, nothing really much else to say about Hooper, other than just a really good way of being able to speed the deck up. On to the trainers, starting off with a single Professor's Letter. Professor's Letter is basically in here just so we can search for two energy relatively early on um, to be able to use Turbo Blaze twice. Basically the idea of the deck is to get um, two Reshiram out and then a Hydreigon on the bench. You'll start with one Reshiram, you'll uh, use Turbo Blaze attaching to a Giratina, you'll then retreat with free retreat into your other Reshiram, um, because of the Dragon Road ability, use Turbo Blaze again, and then, as you can see, we've got four switch here, which will then let you switch into Giratina, attaching your double dragon for the turn, so you've attached four energy in one turn, theoretically, uh, letting you Chaos Wheel from turn one. So that's the basic idea of the deck, um, and that's why, again, we've got four switch in here, just to be able to pull that off as much as possible. And the single Professor's Letter means that we can search out for two fire energy early on in the game, um, basically meaning that if we have all the setup and we just need the basic energy, we're getting the two energy out of the deck rather than one, meaning that we need um, we just need the double dragon really to be able to pull off this strategy if we can get our hands on a professor's letter as well, which is obviously really, really good. Um, yeah, moving on, we have four trainers mail. Again, really efficient, really good at getting through the deck really quickly, getting all of the trainers you need, um, and yeah, getting exactly what you need to get all of these combo pieces turn one. Uh, this is a very this is it, this is a very combo based deck. Um you do need a lot of these pieces all at once if you're going for uh sort of a turn one Giratina. So being able to search for specific trainers or search for trainers specifically in the top four um is usually going to lead you to a useful trainer that you're going to be able to use um somehow to aid your strategy and get getting a turn one Giratina. So yeah definitely important to have four trainers mail. For Ultra Ball, again, just because it's the best Pokemon search we've got at the moment, not only does it lower your hand size for Shaman, uh, it also lets you search out for search for Hooper, which basically turns your Ultra Ball into search for three Pokemon EX rather than one Pokemon. Um, but you can still pick up the extra Reshiram you need, or later on in the game, pick up the Bunnelby if you need, if needs be, just to be able to carry on um, hitting with Chaos Wheel later on in the game when you've perhaps expended a lot of your resources early on. Um, next up for VS Seeker, pretty standard, um, just because we have two or three single, uh, one, one of supporters, which can be used throughout the game, um, in different matchups really. So, having four VS Seeker, having access to four VS Seeker means that we can dump some of these one of supporters early on, and then VS Seeker them a bit later on, as and when we need them. Onto the supporters, we have one Cassius. Uh, that's the Hex Maniac. We have one Cassius. Um, Cassius is sort of one of our forms of healing. Also can be used as a switching card. Obviously, you can heal if you've perhaps taken a hit. Um, you can shuffle your active back into the deck. Or, yeah, usually it's usually going to be your active, in all fairness. You can shuffle your active back into the deck. Um, we don't really want to use AZ, just because double dragons are so precious to us. Uh, getting rid of a double dragon is obviously going to be really, really painful, and in doing so, it's gonna, we're going to have less resources later on. Um, AZ does get it back into the hand, but we can cycle through the deck relatively quickly. Um, by turn 3 or turn 4, we're going to have a relatively smallish deck anyway, to be able to get the cards we need uh, relatively quickly. So it doesn't matter all that much that we're putting the cards back into the deck rather than the hand, because we are ultimately saving ourselves the double dragons, which is pretty much the deck's lifeblood, really. Um, the other reason for Cassius is, obviously, uh, similarly to AZ, if you have something in the active that you don't want in the active, it kind of acts as uh, another switching card. If you don't need your supporter for this turn, you can use it to get your active out of the... get your Pokemon, um, a Pokemon that you don't need, out of the active, to then perhaps use another Turbo Blaze, or if you can't find the switch, you can just use it to get into Giratina after you've done your Turbo Blaze shenanigans, um, letting you Chaos Wheel turn one. Hex Maniac, um, again, is pretty much standard, a one-of in most decks nowadays. Uh, a big deal with this deck is Aegislash. Obviously, we have to use Double Dragons to be able to hit with all of our attackers. 
bar things like shaman but if we're going to be going through an age slash we're going to need something a little bit more powerful than a shaman um hex maniac gets through the mighty shield ability on age slash meaning that we we're not worried about um attaching our double dragons because if we can chain hex maniacs or even just get a hex maniac uh, or two on the right turns to be able to knock out an age slash it can really put us in favor of the prize trade um especially if they've committed a little bit more to this age slash to try and do a bit more damage um, it's going to be very hard for the Age Slash player to one-shot a Giratina, just because they need so much energy. An Age Slash attack isn't all that amazing anyway. It's okay, but it's not going to be one-shotting without a lot of energy. And if they've um, spent a, a, this much energy on taking out a Giratina, odds are we're going to be able to probably we're probably already going to have done some damage to it at least. So we are going to be able to finish it off if we can get our hands on a Hex Maniac. Again, helps with other things, things like stopping your opponent shamaning turn one if you perhaps haven't had the best of turns, or even just um, getting out of item lock a little bit later on in the game where you need when you need to find two or three more resources to continue your lock. Um, Hex Maniac is just so useful. There's so many different different abilities out there that are useful at the moment. I mentioned it earlier on how pretty much this deck runs on abilities. Um, so yeah, being able to Hex Maniac is really really strong. It also helps in the mirror if you're facing um a similar deck in the mirror perhaps a speed variant um that's probably where you're going to see most use out of it in, uh, when facing another giratina just because you can stop them from using their turbo blaze and dragon road all at once um in one nice little neat package which is really really strong for slowing your opponent down especially if you can get your hands on a hex maniac turn one and still have a decent board setup as well Two Lysander again is pretty standard, just picking up exactly what you want from the bench and taking prizes as and where you need them. Um, we do run Muscle Band in here, so you can actually use the Giratina to take out a Shaman in one shot if you've managed to get your hands on a Muscle Band as well, uh, which can be a good way to close out the game, which is definitely a really, really good um, sort of late game finisher if they haven't been able to get rid of their Shaman. Um, a little bit later on in the game, and you're only two prizes away from winning. We've gone for Birch here. Um, it, the, it's the normal Birch Sean debate. I think Birch is slightly better just because you need combo pieces, um, and on on a heads you can definitely do a lot a lot more with seven cards than you can with five. Obviously, when you get tails, you're you're pretty sad. But at the end of the day, you're very rarely going to be using Birch on turn one. Um, you're going to be wanting to look for Sycamore or even something like a Cassius or a Hex Maniac. Their Birch is more of a late game card when you're uh, refreshing your hand and don't need as many resources. That's when Birch is going to come into his own a little bit more when it doesn't matter whether you draw seven or four as much. Um, early on, you're going to be wanting to you're going to be wanting to draw seven, so that's why we've gone for the standard four Sycamore, uh, just because you need your hands on so many different resources to be able to get a Giratina set up in one turn. So yeah, four sick and more, pretty standard. Then finally, a zero sick, zero sick, letting you really, really dominate in the mirror. If you can get your hands on zero sick relatively early, get rid of their spe uh, get rid of their double dragons early on, and then be able to chain them with VS seekers. You can really put um, the Giratina play player behind. It kind of serves a similar role um, in this deck as zero sick did in old style Toad decks, where if you could zero sick their DCE under item lock. Um, they they would find it really difficult to be able to find another DCE if they didn't have some form of supporter, um, which could sometimes stop them from locking you and c completely sort of turn the tables in your fav favour. So Zero Sick kind of does that with the Giratina Mirror. If you can get rid of their Double Dragons relatively early, you can sort of go, go on a bit of a rampage and get take your prizes a little bit quicker than usual. Um, Obviously, getting rid of your own head ringers as well is really, really useful. There's just so many uses to this guy. There's special energy running around everywhere at the moment. Um, so I think Zero Sick is definitely a really, really good inclusion. Finally, on to... Oh, no, we've got the um, stadiums and tools left. I thought it was just the stadiums. Uh, Stadium-wise, we've got one Scorched Earth. Um, the Scorched Earth is kind of multi-purpose. Obviously, you can discard your own fires to be able to draw more, helping you get more cards, get more combo pieces to be able to search for the turn one or turn two Giratina, um, but it's also really good for getting rid of your own Skyfields. If you've um, perhaps had to play the Skyfield early on just for bench space, which you often will have to do just because there are a lot of different Pokemon that you need 
all in one turn, you're going to need, um, ideally, you're going to need two Reshiram, two Giratina, uh, one or two Hydreigon, ide probably one, but you can, if you're into play the second, then a Hooper and perhaps a Shaman or two. That's That clocks up your bench really, really quickly. Um, and it, it kind of Hooper sort of clogs up one of the bench spots all the time. Um, so being able to play the Skyfield early on, and then a little bit later on, bounce out your own Skyfield for Scorched Earth, um, and then lock it in with Giratina's attack. It means that your opponents um, that are playing things like Mega Rayquaza and Raichu are going to really struggle to one-shot um, the the Giratina from a bench of five. Uh, and if you can lock, yeah, if you can lock in your Scorched Earth, it's going to make it really hard for them to be able to. Um, sort of put a lot of pressure on the Raichu player can really struggle if they don't have some form of extra damage um, and unless the uh, Rayquaza player can get around this Renegade Pulse ability consistently they're also going to struggle to one shot you because they need five Pokemon and a Muscle Band and more often than not the uh, Rayquaza player doesn't play, re play Muscle Bands um, so you're going to be able to live through both of those uh, matchups, which is really, really important, and then you can also sort of help yourself with consistency as well later on because you can discard your own fires uh, when you're searching for something a little bit later on, just to perhaps finish off setting up your second or third Giratina later on in the game. And then finally, the Muscle Bands, as I mentioned, Muscle Band is really good for uh, knocking out Shamans with Giratina to take the last two prizes, knocking out Regice with Reshiram if you need to. Just that extra 20 damage can really help. Um, so yeah, Muscle Band is definitely a good inclusion. It can also help with two-shotting Megas. Um, things like, if you if you if even if you only get the Muscle Band on one of your two attacks, you can knock out a Mega Manetric and a Mega Sceptile in two shots. Um, if you And a Mega Rayquaza in two shots as well. But if you happen to get have the Muscle Band for both of your attacks, you can actually knock out some of these 240 HP um, Mega Pokemon in various different situations, which uh, would otherwise be three hit knockouts, which can kind of skew the prize trade, because more often than not, they're going to be two-shotting you. Um, and if you're three-shotting them, it's kind of awkward. But yeah, the Muscle Band definitely helps out with the maths in lots of different situations. And then, finally, we've got four Double Dragon, of course, just because, like I say, it's the deck's lifeblood. And eight Fire, just to be able to always, be, uh, always draw into them. Um, early on, you can Turbo Blaze quite efficiently. And then you've always got them for Professor's Letter if you need to. Uh, you can discard them with Scorched Earth early or late, as and when you need more cards. There's just loads of, basically loads of different reasons um, why the 8 energy is definitely justified, I feel. Okay, so we're going to see if we can get a battle with Giratina Reshiram, just so I can kind of show off the strategy a little bit more. Um, I had a battle earlier on. Uh, unfortunately, it was cut. Um, well, I was interrupted halfway through it, and it was it really showed off the strategy really well. I didn't have the greatest of first turns, um, but the second turn I got the whole strategy pulled off, so it was really unfortunate to see um, an interruption halfway through that game, because it would have been a really good game to show off how quickly this deck can, can sort of set up. Uh, but it looks like we've got another battle here with some really, really cool sleeves. Um, on our opponent's deck. That, they're really nice. We are going to go first. We can't attack first, but going first is always a good thing. Pictures aren't working great. It looks like they're a little bit better. Okay, dangerous and any um, dark types. So nothing too revealing there. We do indeed start with the Giratina. Um, that's okay. There's worse things to start with. There's better things to start with. Giratina is probably an okay starter on the whole. Um, we don't look like we've got much of a strong first turn. It's going to depend on what we can get from the trainer's mail. Hopefully an Ultra Ball or another or another supporter or something. It'll be interesting to see um, what we get. Uh, but we do get, of course, the Mulligan card. And it's a Shaman, so actually an Ultra Ball would be really good here. We we see a Yvitol and a Crocodile starting off, so let's see what we can do. Start off with a trainer's mail, Ultra Ball, that's... Um, Ultra Ball's really good. I'm just not sure whether I want to take the Sycamore over it. I think Ultra Ball's better here. So we'll take the Ultra Ball, because we do um, obviously have the Switch in hand as well to be able to get into the Reshiram. Uh, we'll go for the second Trainer's Mail. 
and it's a birch. We're not going to take the birch. We don't need it. Um, I'm going to ultra ball both of our supporters just because we've got a VS seeker, and I'm not 100% sure what I want to use yet. So by doing that, we do indeed have access to um, a Reshiram, which we can switch into and use Turbo Blaze. We could alternatively go for the Hooper, getting ourselves another Shaman, another Gir another Giratina, and probably a Hydreigon. Uh, it looks like there's only one Hydreigon in there, which is definitely good to know. And the Bunnelby is also in there, which is another really important point. Um, I think I'm going to go with the... Hmm. I'm going to go with the the Reshiram. I think that's probably the safer play for now because we can lower our hand size a little bit more and then go for the Shaman. So we are indeed going to switch into the Reshiram and use Turbo Blaze on the benched Giratina and then drop down a Shaman for 5. Um, we do get some really, really good cards there. That's definitely a really, really good start. Let's attach the Muscle Band and the Double Dragon for turn. Um, and we could go all in and go for a Sycamore. I think that's probably a good play here. Um, just so we can set up our bench a little bit more. So we're going to go for the Sycamore. Uh, that is both of our Lysanders down. That's something to definitely keep in the back of our mind. Um, but that's not too bad overall. We are going to get another Reshiram, which is good. And another Giratina, which is again really good. Um... I do have the Skyfield, but there's no real reason to play it. It can bounce one of his Shadow Circles next turn if he plays one. Um, and that we're going to get nothing from it, so there's no real reason to play it. I'm also going to attach the Muscle Band here, just so we don't get Head Ringed. Um, and then we're going to end the turn. Next turn, hopefully we should be able to pick up some, sort of, some form of switching card from the um, Sycamore that I'm undoubtedly going to play. Uh, we should be able to pretty much set up our Chaos Wheels as of next turn. He plays a dangerous energy and he does indeed have the uh, Shadow Circle so it was good to keep it in hand. Definitely a good idea. Um, Skyfield is going to mean that we're not going to lose too much value with Ho with Hooper which is obviously really good. Um, we can't get the second... Uh, we can get the first Hydreigon. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go for all three here. That will take our bench up to eight. Um, hmm... Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, let's go for all. Uh, the Giratina is kind of just a sitting duck, so we're just going to get the Hydreigon and the Shaman. We need the Hydreigon to be able to uh, start Chaos Wheeling this turn. So we will Turbo Blaze onto this same Giratina. And then I'll drop a Shaman. We are going to get more cards, which are going to discard with a Sycamore, but hopefully we'll get some other decent pieces as well. We also get VS Seeker, um, which could actually lend use to using a uh, Hex Maniac this turn as well, which could be an interesting play. We'll see what we get off the Trainer's Mail. Um, Cassius or VS Seeker. I think we're better off holding off. What else did we get? Reshiram and a Trainer's Mail. Okay, I think we're better off holding off with where we are at the moment. We'll go for the... Um, hmm... Are we going to need trainers next turn? Uh, sp I, uh, sorry, abilities next turn. We definitely could, but I think we've got a decent board set up, and I think he's going to struggle to... How much is he doing? He's doing 80, 100. We're going to take 20, so he's going 120, 140, 160. So he can knock us out. Um, so maybe it's not the best idea to go for the Hex Maniac. Maybe let's go for the Lysander and try and stall him and hit the Crocodile. Just because um, I don't really want to hit the dangerous energy, but there's no real reason for us not to start swinging this turn. I perhaps should have sycamored, but I kind of don't want to sycamore three, uh, two other sycamores, and a um, VS Seeker. So I kind of want to get some use out of the VS Seeker. I'm actually going to go for the letter and pull two energy out of the deck, just because we haven't attached this turn yet. So we will get two attachments done. We can start attaching to our second Giratina, and then we're just going to go for Chaos Wheel, hopefully locking out, locking him out of enough to um, slow him down uh, substantially. He is going to get a second energy on the Uvatol, which means it is going to be doing some big damage. 
Um, hmm. We may as well bench the Reshiram. There's no real reason not to. Let's drop the Reshiram down and drop the energy on here. We can then go for the Sycamore, one of the three Sycamores. We don't have any more Sycamores, which is definitely another really important thing to note. But we do indeed get a Double Dragon for later on. So that means we are going to be able to set up a second Giratina next turn. Um, hmm. I'm going to train Ismail just to see what we can get. We do indeed get a Scorched Earth. That was what I was going for. Though actually the Cassius may be better. Um, let's get the Cassius because he's going to... I, I think what we're gonna, what's going to happen here is we're going to knock out the Crocodile. He's going to come in and do 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140 to us. Um, so we can then shuffle it back in and then hit with the Giratina. Um, and hopefully get some value out of the other uh, other Reshirams out here at the moment. Cassius is definitely an interesting play. Um, hmm. I think either way we're going to go down by one, so I think I'll take the Cassius and see how the next turn plays out. Uh, I am going to go for the Chaos Will, knocking out the Crocodile, and we are going to pick up the Zero Sick, which is actually really important. That Zero Sick means we can get rid of that bad and uh, da dangerous energy. Sorry, um, negating twenty, da ne negating the twenty damage will take when we hit him, uh, meaning that it's going to be a two shot rather than a one-shot, more often than not. So he's going to get a third energy. I, I would imagine he's going to Evil Ball here, just for a huge chunk of damage. I think I'm then going to respond with uh, by retreating. He's going to get 160. That's a huge, huge amount of damage. Um, I can't see any way of him being able to knock out the, gir the Giratina from the bench. Um, we could zero sick and just hit with the weak one. I feel like that might not be a bad play. So let's let's attach the double dragon to the bench. Um, let's go for the zero sick on the dangerous energy, and then hit him with a chaos. Sorry, hit him with a chaos wheel again. He's only got four cards in hand. Hopefully he won't have anything too substantial. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see what he's got for this turn. I can definitely see his Giratina going down this turn. He's only got 10 HP left. Um, but we will have taken two prizes and dealt a huge damage to our next uh, Yuvatol with it, which is really important. Looks like he might be looking for like a DC or something. Oh no, he can't play the DC, uh, which is why he didn't play the bad energy. That makes sense. So he's going to attach to the bench. Yep, that indeed makes sense. And he's going to hit with the Giratina. Um, here I'm going to throw up a Reshiram just because Reshiram is really useful in the active if we can get a fire energy at some point. I'm going to bench the other Giratina. I'm actually going to throw the Scorched Earth into play uh, because it's going to get rid of some of the sitting ducks on our bench that we don't really want anymore. The two Shaman and the Hooper mainly. This board setup is really, really strong. Um, I think the best bet is probably... Unfortunately, we don't have access to any fire energy this turn, um, which means we're not going to be able to set up a second... Uh, well, the second Giratina in a turn. We are going to get the Double Dragon on, which is pretty good. Um, unless we can find another Fire Energy. I'd ki I kind of want to shred here, just because I don't really want to put Giratina up front. But I think it's the right play. So we're just going to attach here. Um, no real reason for, you, for us to use anything in the deck. Uh, in anything in hand, in all honesty. Maybe this might be an okay time to uh, Hex Maniac, just to try and stall him a little bit. Um, what else could we do? Hmm. We've gone through one, two, three double dragons. So there is one more double dragon still left. 
Okay, let's retreat into this Giratina. Um, again, I can't see him knocking us out this turn without access to tools and specials. So let's just go for the VS Seeker on the Hex Maniac. I don't feel it's going to hurt us all too much. Um, but they're definitely famous last words. So we will see. Uh, we are indeed going to go for Chaos Wheel. The idea is hopefully I'm going to be able to stop him from doing anything with Shaman or any other interesting Pokemon he's got in the deck that we haven't seen so far. Um, though maybe I shouldn't shouldn't have done that just to kind of bait the Shaman out to then take the knockout next turn with the Lysander play. Uh, but either way, I think it, I think both plays are okay. He's indeed going to go into the Uvatol with the energy, which was kind of expected. He's going to go for a fan club. This could be really interesting to see what he gets here. He's going to be doing 60 plus 80, so 140 at the moment. And he's going to get a baby Uvatol. Only a baby Uvatol, which is an interesting play. Um, hmm. We are a little bit behind at the moment, just because we're going to need to find two energy. Uh, but I think there there are still quite a few energy in the deck. We've gone through one, two, two of our shamans. So let's hop into the deck and see if there is a third shaman for when this Giratina goes down. Um, I don't really feel we're going to need the second switch or the third Hydreigon, or the second Hydreigon. So let's just have a look to see what we've got left. We do indeed have, yeah, I thought we had uh, a double dragon. I thought I saw it earlier on. So okay, this isn't all that bad. We are missing that VS Seeker, which is kind of rough. Um, the VS Seeker could really help here. I think what I'm going to have to go for here is probably... Um, probably just go for a Birch, in all honesty. Let's switch into the Reshiram, just so we can free retreat if we need to. And then I'm going to go for the Birch. Um, the Birch could get us into two energy, which would be really good. Or the second Double Dragon, which again would be really good. Uh, we do only get four cards, which is really rough. We do get one energy, though, so we are off to an okay start. We can Turbo Blaze onto this rush, uh, onto this Giratina, sorry, and then retreat into the Giratina and go for a Chaos Wheel again. We're only one turn away from being able to knock out this Uvatol and one energy away as well. So hopefully there's something in here that we can pick up over the next uh, over the next couple of turns. We can throw the Reshrams out one at a time. They're going to be relatively difficult for him to deal with um, in one turn. Just because we don't have any attached any energy attached to them. And we have 130 HP uh, and only give it one prize. So I'm not feeling too, too bad at the moment. He's going to get the second energy. And play a Malamar EX. That's interesting. It's interesting that he decided to go for... Okay, he's going to retreat. And knock us out, I believe. Is that a knockout? Yeah, it is indeed a knockout. So ideally, we're going to be able to um, find some way of being able to get into our energy this turn. Uh, that that would be fantastic, but we'll see what we can pull off. We're going to go for the Reshiram again, just because, again, it's got free retreat with the Dragon Road. We do get the second Double Dragon, which is really, really strong. Um... Is there any way of us being able to knock, uh, well, do anything in the form of knocking out any Pokemon? We may have to sort of um, just sit on our hand at the moment and see what we can get. There's only eight cards in deck, and two of them are outs to being able to... I believe two of them are outs. Though we could just Chaos Wheel um, and continue to apply pressure. Though attaching the Double Dragon is really, really painful. Um, just because it, he's going to be doing one more, one extra um, amount of damage. Hmm. Interesting play. I think the best thing to do here is kind of just to s sit on what we've got. Um, I can't see him knocking out a Reshiram all that quickly. 
So we will see what he can do, he can respond with next turn. I have broken the lock, but I don't think um, it matters all that much at this point in the game. As soon as we can get our uh, Lysander, we are going to be able to take out the bench Yuvatoli X. He's going to bench a Pancham, that's interesting. He is going to attach a double colourless. Um, so we are going to see a pretty big Yuvatol here. So if he has access to Lysander, he could be dealing some really big damage to Giratina relatively soon. He's already doing 100. With us, that with our damage, that's 60. Uh, we do get the Fire Energy, which means we are going to be able to use Scorched Earth. So let's use Scorched Earth, see what we can get. Hopefully we can get the Lysander, and we do get the VS Seeker for the Lysander. So we can indeed attach here, uh, search for VS Seeker, so use the VS Seeker to search for Lysander. Pick up the Yuvatol on the bench, retreat into the Giratina, and knock out the active Yuvatol with Chaos Wheel for the game. So yeah, as you can see, the deck is the deck can be really fast, um, but it has relatively good late game as well, just because you have natural energy acceleration, um, all of the dragon type support, and you've got rid of a lot of your sort of dead cards later on. So. It's definitely a really interesting um, dex tryout. I think it's going to be pretty good leading into regionals, just because it's pretty consistent, um, can do what it what it's meant to do really quickly. Um, and yeah, I think it's definitely one you should try out, or at least test against, even if you're not considering playing it. Um, but other than that, thank you very much for watching. I've been Jack from Omnipoke, and I will see you all in another video.